Well, welcome to Westside Tabernacle again this morning. Looking forward to what God's going to do. Yes. Uh, we're going to start our service off with some prayer. Good to see all the homeboys and the homegirls in the house of God. We're excited what God's doing in this, this season. Yes. And uh, yes. I had excited. I went to go get my cousin yesterday. And I went to go visit a doctor in theology, Dr. Turner. And I was like, you know, we preach and get together. Oh, we're just gonna, I'm just going to meet with you for about 30 minutes. <laughs> I didn't leave his house till 10 o'clock at night. And I, the side of thing, we talked. He told me that he's going to be baptizing in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. Jesus. 80-something years old. Wow. Papa, we need that day. So he said he's going to need some help in that water. He's going to need some help getting in there. So I went for it. God's doing. It's good to see LaToya. Love LaToya. Good to see her. All my friends. We got some more people going to be showing up. Uh, we're going to start our service off with some prayer. God, we want to thank you for a chance to be in your house today. Lord, we ask that you bless this house. You bless your word in the mighty name of Jesus. All right. So my musicians and Salina are not going to be probably for a couple weeks. They're not going to be here. So we're going to just to tough it out. We got the old, old folks. I remember one time Josiah was like, Daddy, where's that lady at? I want that lady singing. So the toy we've been having the church from Salinas coming down, bringing musicians. So today we just tough it out with the old folks. And I got some old traditional songs. And uh, there's a couple songs I sing halfway decent. Uh, one song is Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Well, Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. And it don't take a whole lot, just use what faith you got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. And just a little bit of faith. And just a little bit of faith. And just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. No matter what you go through in life, if you have faith, if you have belief in God, you can make it through the storm. Yes. And one of my other favorite songs is, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. Oh, don't do it without me. You can place your name in that. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. Oh, don't do it without me. Lord, if you're healing, healing in this season, please don't do it without me. Oh, don't do it without me. Lord, if you're saving, you're saving in this season, Please don't do it without me. Oh, don't do it without me. And this is for everyone. Lord, if you're blessing, you're blessing in this season. Please don't do it without me. Oh, don't do it without me. This is for all of us. And Lord... If you're delivering, delivering in this season, please don't do it without me. Oh, don't do it without me. Praise. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Amen, amen. The, the Lord knew I needed some help, so he sent his spirit to touch me and help me. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I want to welcome everyone to Westside Tabernacle Church. This is a church where the kingdom of God is promoted and man's kingdom is brought down low. Today's lesson will be on Christian growth and true knowledge. And we'll be taking our scripture reading from 2 Peter 1, 5 through 10. And as I was studying this scripture, man, it is a lot it is such so it's so much meat and so much understanding in this word of God that's here to help us and touch us and give us the strength we need to do that we can live a life that's pleasing before God. Because you know, a lot of people are dying right now. 
I've been going to a lot of funerals, been going to a lot of wakes. For the first time ever, I went to two wakes back to back. Brother Bernard and uh, the Reverend um, Gray, uh, used to be the pastor of Second Baptist Church. Got to go to both of these uh, wakes. I couldn't make it to the funeral. Praise. Oh, there we go. Got so much, got enough bass in my voice to scare everybody. <laughs> Second Peter 2, 5, 1 to 5 through 10. And it says, beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. I like, I like this one better, baby. Now, what does this mean? Faith is belief in God. If you can have faith in God, you can overcome every obstacle in your life. Believe God. Have faith in God. What does the Bible say about God? That he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. And you know, one thing that I'm going to push for 2021, it's too loud. What about everybody else? It's too loud? Okay, can Sister Freeman, can you get a little plug? It's too loud to talk to because what happens since some people on the internet, they're not hearing as well, and they're they're cutting off because they're not hearing it. So I don't want to... No, wanna... I got you because I can't hear you either on the internet. Like, oh, you can't? No, like usually when I watch you on the internet, I can't hear you because you're too low. Like this is, I don't know. Just... Okay, so I don't want to blow Sister Freeman out because we've been having complaints about that. And you know, one of my friends, King Frank, he said, Joseph, I can't hear you. I'm just going to cut you off. I don't want to be cut off. Uh, so I'll try not to yell and scream, Sister Freeman, give me a little head nod, because I got, I got some fire shot on my bones today. Come on, man. Come I on, mean, Frank, Have me some Salisbury steak. Come on. And some mixed vegetables and crushed peppers. I got to tag up with a doctor yesterday, a doctor of theology. And I said, man, he said, you know what, Joseph? He said, we was talking. And uh, he said, I said, man, he said, I want to have fellowship. I said, man, let's have fellowship. I said, let's join together and kick the devil's teeth out. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got to work together, and we need every single one of us. This is our job to win the city. What the Son of Man came? He came to seek and save that which is lost. God needs every single one of you to be used for his kingdom. It doesn't matter about your faults. It doesn't matter about your mistakes. It doesn't matter about your shortcomings. If we come to God in faith and believe him, that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek after him. He's not looking for perfect people. Nope. If he was looking for perfect people, I wouldn't be in the kingdom of God. Nope. If he was looking for all of us that had it together, he wouldn't, we wouldn't need God. Right. Thank you, Jesus. But belief and trust in God. You know, can we have trust in God? Knowing that he knows what's best for us. That he knows what's best for your situation. He knows what's best for your family. He knows what's best for your future. Mm. Can you have trust in God? During our situation, Bobby and Papa, we got to have trust in God. Yeah. And sometimes God lets that avalanche of life, mm -hmm. the trouble of life, to get us directed back to him yeah. like we need to be. Yeah. It's so easy to get off course yeah. when everything's going good. Fidelity and faithfulness. Fidelity is, you know, having faith in God. That we're going to believe God through the thick and thin. God loves when we're faithful unto him. Good to see my friend, James. Uh, good to see you, brother. Uh, me and James, it was funny. We was talking uh, before, Bobby, before we even started this church. We were sitting at Munson Steakhouse. And I was like, you know what? I put, God's put in my heart to start a church. Yes. And he said, brother, God's going to do it for you. Yeah. And that was over three or four years ago. And look at what the Lord has done. I'm thankful yes. for what he's done. Yeah. Virtue also means quality. Consider morally good and desirable in a person. If we could have a virtue where people, they love being around us because we're encouraging. We uplift people. We talk nice to people. You know, I like what Joe Biden said. 
He said in a, uh, a news conference, he said, if I see any of you government employees talking down to somebody, he said, I'm firing you on the spot. Yeah. I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Hello. You know, I was messing with Josiah. We was running around the house saying, Red Kingdom. And I was messing with Josiah. And Josiah said, Red Kingdom, dead, blue kingdom. And he don't know nothing about Biden or anything like that. So that was funny that my son was talking about that. We are also going to talk about the goodness and gracious act, virtue of righteousness, properly, manliness, excellence. It's something about when someone has a walk with God, it intrigues you. You're like, you know what? When it, the Bible says that we're what? The salt of the earth. You know, you look at Thula, my, my cousin Thula, Latoya, she has some food, ain't no salt in it. Where's the salt? Give me the salt! Man, she almost kicked my uncle in the butt. Oh, you put my season salt in my food. You didn't get that season salt, boy. You thought it was about to be World War II in there. That's just like my auntie. My auntie, she's older now. She's 60. And she used to be one of the most feistiest women in the world. Uh, we had a Palauan guy next door. He was whooping up on his wife. My auntie came outside. She didn't call 911. She said, hey, stop hitting your wife. And he looked at her and said, what you going to do? She grabbed his skirt and said, I'll fight you like a man. That man stopped hitting his wife. We didn't have no more problems with that guy. Someone's got to stand for righteousness. Virtue also means quality. Consider morally good and desirable in a person. You know, it's so refreshing when you meet somebody that just loves God. That loves you. That doesn't want to take advantage of you. That wants the best for you and your family. Wants the best. You know, some people get to that point, Sister Freeman. What about me and my family? You take it away from me and my family. What about everybody else's family? That's right. That's right. Come on now. What about Come on. Is your family the only family that's more important than everybody else's? No. Everybody's important. That's right. And what's it say in the Bible? It said God is no respecter of persons. He don't care if you're black. He don't care if you're white. He don't care if you're purple. You got gang green. He don't care about your ugly, fat, poor. You know, if it was about good looks, I wouldn't be in the kingdom of God. But God has mercy upon all of us. The Bible in Proverbs talks about a virtuous woman. What does the Bible say about a virtuous woman? We look at Proverbs 31 and 10. Give you a chance to turn in a virtuous woman. While I'm going to go single, we need to get married. While I'm going to marry off one day, and I tell these young men, live for God, put God first, and God will give you the desires of your heart. I tell Dula, you know, she met a drummer. She met a musician. Boy, you should have saw them pop up. She said there was a musician here. He plays the drums. He plays the bass. Talented man. Fully blind. Oh, wow. Cannot play a lot of musicians. Wow. And uh, found out through it. She's like, hey, he's blind. What? He's blind too? So I want to meet this guy. He came back. He's a, he's a short black guy. Nice guy. So Thula's black. It don't matter if you're white, black, purple, green. But I just say this for the illustration of the story. So we're sitting down. And this guy's blind, so he don't see color. And uh, Thula said, hey, I'm black. He said, for real? <laughs> He was excited. And you know, it's not about color of your skin, but Proverbs 31 and 10. It says, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is above rubies? Papa, we can find somebody that just loves God, loves truth, and can love us. Wow. What a price. You find a woman that, you know, it's, 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 it's hard when you get along, two people living together. You don't get along all the time. Your breath strength stinks. You know, you fart on each other and all that stuff like that. I remember one guy, he used to torture his wife. He'd hold her under cover and fart in there and make her suffer. You know, oh we do things against each other. You know, I was doing it on TikTok. It was funny. I, I started doing TikTok videos, little short videos, and I talked about marriage. And I talked about, I told them guys, I said, a lot of times when your wife argues with you or your <laughs> significant other, it's not because they're mad at you. It's because you're ignoring them. And they know if they can start an argument, they got your attention. Yep. You're going to stop playing that video game. Yep. You're going to stop cutting that wood. You're going to stop doing what you want to do because now you've got to defend yourself. Oh, you want to fight? And they weren't really looking for a fight. They just wanted to get your attention. And I told some of the men, get off that Call of Duty. Get off that Facebook. Get off all that YouTube and spend some time with that woman. You know, It's easier said than done, but we got to continue to date. And you got to understand, a lot of times when I'm preaching, I have not perfected everything I'm preaching. But this is the word of God, and God has a higher level than all of us. That we may come to the full measure 
and stature of Christ. The Bible says that the preaching of the word is for the perfecting of the saints. And it's not just for you. It's for me too. I know one time I was preaching about the rebellion against God is equivalent to witchcraft. And I had a guy say, Joseph, I don't want to come to church no more. I said, what happened? He said, you were attacking me. You were, you were preaching against me. I said, man, that preaching was for me too. You looked at me like, for real? No, just because I'm preaching, I got to apply it too. And I promise you, I got a wife that endorses it. Then you preach uh, so and so, and you do a lot. So there's help and there's balance. Verse 11 The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. Man, that would preach. We have to have faith in our significant other that we can have a little confidence in them. For example, let's say they don't come home at 10 o'clock. Where you been? Where you been? You chasing some woman? Huh? You talking to another woman? Have some faith and confidence in them. You know, and I tell you right now, there are some men, this is this is very valuable to them. And it's sad to say if your wife or your significant other cannot grab your phone at any time, you gotta erase stuff before they grab it. Thank you. My wife right now can grab my phone anytime. And I don't have to worry about erasing uh, hub sites and all that crazy stuff. Why? Because I love my wife. I love my family. I love my God. That means more to me than anything else. My kids, I got two beautiful kids. Thank God they look like mama. But they need a dad in their home. They need a father. They need an example. It was sad when we grew up in church. When I grew up, Sister Freeman, all the kids I grew up with, none of us had dads. I thought it was just the norm. I'm going to school and everyone looking around. Everyone bringing, the moms are bringing them to school. Nobody had a dad. And when you had a, the guy that had a dad, it was his stepdad. So that's so important. Me and my wife have been married for 11 years. Thanks be to God. And if it wasn't for the house of God and church, we wouldn't have been made it that long. That's why it's so important to keep God. The Bible says a triple cord is not easily broken. That's you, your wife, and God in the midst of your situation. And it says, so that he shall have no need of spoil. Verse 12, she would do him good and not evil all the days of her life. My, my, my. He says, you're not going to do her evil. And that same thing for a man. You push, you, you, you're evil. You do stupid stuff. You do vile things against your wife. You're going to reap what you sow. You're going to get that back. But you got to do good things. You got to love them. You got to date them. You got to pursue them. And after you get married, you know, you still got to continue dating. You still got to show appreciation. It's hard for us men to show appreciation. After we get what we want, we like kings. We already conquered the mountain. We still have to pursue love and pursue a relationship with that person. Verse 13, it says, She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She's a hard worker. You know, you got to give your wife some help. Sometimes she'd be in there washing dishes and doing things, and you're like, Hey, you ain't cooking nothing to eat. And she'll look at you like, Joker, don't you see me washing dishes? You hear it? And you get mad. Why don't you go help her wash the dishes? I made a mistake one time. I washed. I was like, you know what? I'm helping my wife out. I wash clothes after clothes after clothes. And I was thinking, you know what? Well, she's going to fold them. And I just did her a favor. She said, man, you go help me fold. And I'm like, I'm folding and folding. I was like, man, next time I think I'm going to wash, fold, wash and fold. Now I see why she did it the way she did it. I was thinking, get them all washed together. <sighs> Praise God. And off that, that's what I want to bring out about the book of Proverbs. And what is it saying? It is not saying, one good note I want to share with you about the book of Proverbs. It's just showing a man what should he be looking for. It's not instructing a woman. But it said these are attributes that you should be looking for. When you're looking for a wife or a significant other, the first thing you got to understand is you want somebody that's faithful to God. Because if they're not faithful to God, they're not going to be faithful to you. That's right. That's the first thing. You want to find somebody that puts their priorities right, put their priorities straight. They're not worried about everything else beside what's going on in their house. Oh, yeah. Then we're going back to 2 Peter 2, 1 and 5. The ending of 2 Peter 2, 1 and 5 says, add to virtue knowledge. Can to be described as understanding Peter, um, Frank, we're at 2 Peter 1 and 5. It had King Frank with me. It was one of my, one of my, one of the, one of the beginning Mohicans. Uh, I got some of the, the original tribe that came with us. It was Frank. Latoya came our second service. 
Sister Freeman and Frank Zan and my wife, and then I toted it into the, the bitter end. 2 Peter 1 and 5 is, talks about add to your virtue knowledge. It can be described as understanding God's ways and his commandments. Sometimes we get we look at the word of God as a stumbling block. When the word of God tells us we're not supposed to do something, and we want to do it anyway. You know, if you think about it, there's a lot of scriptures in the Bible that if we didn't, if there weren't consequences for disobeying them, a lot of people wouldn't do it. And so what this word of God does, it confines us. It gives us boundaries so we don't step out of place and to be in a bad situation with our neighbor and our friend. You know, I tell, uh, I like to tell men, I was, when I grew up, I never believed in adultery when I was a young man. I never believed in messing with another man's wife. Because you know what, Frank, I didn't want to die in somebody else's bed. I know that was a straight ticket to hell. And I'm sad to say, some man, I find some man in my bed, it ain't going to be good business for me. I'm going to hurt him bad. i probably beat him half to death if, if the Lord don't stop me. So you don't want to mess with a man because it says in the day of jealousy, it's hard to restrain a man. You can mess with a man's family, you catch him, you're going to catch him, some H-E double hockey sticks. <laughs> now note, the Christian must develop in order to be spiritually victorious and fruitful before God. Referring back to 2 Peter 1 and 5, it says, giving all diligence. What does diligence mean? Demonstrates that a believer must act, be actively involved in Christian growth. 2 Peter 1 and 5. And perfecting or maturing. We need to be mature as Christians. So if we have attitude problems, and sometimes when people are, they have a mental disorder or they have an attitude problem, they say, well, you know, i got a mental disorder, so i got a reason to cuss you out when I'm upset. Yeah. No, the Bible doesn't know that we need to mature, that we need to grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if we got an attitude when we don't have no self-control, we get mad when we cuss everybody out. If we started that, when we first start walking with God, we need to develop where we overcome that. And just because you don't get your way is not a reason to get upset and irate with people. You need to find a way to challenge your anger, challenge your aggression. You know what? When I get mad, I get upset. It's a good time for me to pray. It's a good time to seek God's face. Why? Because I want to please God. We're talking about being mature and Christian growth. There's some other qualities that, you know, we're discussing in these, some of these attributes about walking with God. And verse 6 2 Peter 1 and 6. And into knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. We talked about what knowledge means. We talked about understanding about knowledge. What does knowledge mean? You know, they go to school, we get educated, we get knowledge. But what does it talk about when the Bible is referring to knowledge? 2 Timothy 1 and 5. It says, show. Excuse me, 2 Timothy 2. 2.15. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. When we get an opportunity to know what God says, we should not be ashamed. You should know what that Bible says. And if you don't know what that Bible says, you need to be diligent and in into learning what the word of God says. James, like when we have people, they come and get their new rank, E6, E7. You got to know your standards. You got to know your operations and procedures. You got to know all these things. Because if you don't pass that test, it's going to mess with your pocketbook. Nope. Same thing with the kingdom of God. We need to be diligent because this is the most important thing in your life is being saved. I cannot express this enough. When we grow up, you find that most men, they chase money when they're growing up. Nope. And they lose their health chasing money. And then when they get old, what they're doing, they're spending all their money that contain their health before they die. Chasing that never endless dream that never satisfies your soul. Now when it talks about study, and the Greek word means spu dazu, and that's to hasten, make haste, to exert oneself, endeavor to give diligence. That means you labor at the word of God. How many times have you spent over an hour just digging up that word of God? Studying what God says. Trying to understand what God has for you. For there are many precious promises in the word of God. That's for every single one of us. If we will apply ourselves. 
The next part of the verse is temperance. Oh my goodness. Temperance. This is where a lot of people are lost. And for example, when we had the COVID-19 and you had a lot of, of couples, they didn't have the chance to go to work. They were confined to their house. We had a lot of situations where the lawyers were making money off what? Domestic violence. The men were getting upset. They weren't able to pay their bill. So guess what they did? They took it out on their wives. Or the wives took it out on their husband. And they start fighting each other. They start getting aggressive. They start going to jail. And the Lord said, we're just making money. Because people are not able to get along. And to find that source of comfort and peace, which is in Jesus Christ. Temperance means self-control. That's what a lot of us men are lacking today. Self-control. If you can learn how to control your temper, if you can learn how to control your mouth, it'll be a lot easier for these women to get along with us. If we can learn how to control our hands, just because you get upset with somebody don't mean you need to be aggressive with them. We have no right to hit another or a significant other. Because just imagine if every time we didn't do what God said, God hit us. Everybody be walking around like this. Bam, 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 bam. Nobody would want that. So how do we have the right to hit upon, hit upon our families? No. Now, there's a difference between disciplining your kids and stuff like that. And I like to talk. I don't hit my kid. I don't hit my kids in the face. I don't slap my son. Mm -hmm. Josiah, come here, buddy. And I'm going to show you something. You tell someone hits their kids with their hands. Come right here. You don't even flinch. Why? Because I don't hit them with my hands. You got to see. There's no fear. It's love. You know, when daddy put his hand out, it's to hold him, to hug him, to embrace him. That's why the Bible said the spoiler, the spare rod spoils the child. If I have to discipline him, just how would I get? I get the pow pow stick, right? You want pow pow? Oh, you don't understand what that means. <laughs> no, sir, you don't want no pow pow power. And what does that do? Instead of just, he gets up, I get upset, pow! He doesn't get a chance to respond and correct his behavior. But I say, Joseph, we go, Josiah, you want to get pop pop? Now he understands there is a consequence for his action. Yeah. A lot of us grew up, I was blessed. My grandfather never hit me in my face. He took a belt. I had to earn it. Now, one time, Bobby almost got hit in the face. I was talking to my new girlfriend. And you know how it's young men. And when we get a new girlfriend, nothing else matters. No matter what mama say, daddy say, I'm on the phone. All y'all can just shut up. So I'm talking to that new girlfriend, just, just chopping it up, you know. That was that was what's popping, Frank. We just had a good time talking, and I'm forgetting everybody. My grandma like, get off the phone, get off the phone. And I'm talking to my girl, I said, man, my grandma tripping, and like an idiot, I was in grandfather's room, retired master sergeant. He got to say, your grandma's what? I was like, oh, 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 oh. I think I need to go in. Talk to you later. Grandpa was about to probably for the first time hit me in my face, but I backtracked. And uh, it was funny, my grandfather, he was old school. And uh, I was telling my mom, it was funny. Uh, I went in to get an earring. And I was like, all excited, middle school. And I was a fat, all the boys get earrings. I said to my mama, I said, Mom, I'm getting me an earring. She said, oh, you are. I said, yes, 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 all the boys just go get earrings. She went to my grandfather. Hey, Joseph get an earring. Oh, he is. So I went to my grandfather. He said, Joseph, I heard you get an earring. I said, yeah. He said, when you get it, I'm ripping it out. And he wasn't with his talk. He meant it. He meant it. So if I got everything, it was going to get ripped out. You would saw that little slit in my ear. And I wasn't going to try him. After that, I didn't want no earring. I didn't want no tattoo. I didn't want nothing. And that's how my grandfather raised me. Strange, strong. Self-control. Virtue. The virtue of one who masters his desires and passions. Especially his sensual appetite. If you can master that appetite when you see you're a single man or something like that and you're dating somebody and you want to put your hands all over, self-control. Manage that sensual appetite. And you're married, you know, if you're walking in public, you're with your woman, it's a lot easier not to stare at that good-looking woman walking past you. And you'll get an elbow or a karate chop in the back of the neck. They're going to help. God has given that help me to help us do right. Also, what kind of man are you outside your work environment? What kind of man are you when the lights are off? What kind of man are you alone when you have access to the hubs and the stuff like that? The only hub you should be looking at is called Bible Hub. Other than that, it's not appropriate. 
You got to be able to practice self-control, spending time. Not, don't feed that evil nature. Don't feed that, that nature of looking at them hubs. Because a lot of them are fake anyway. There's a lot of plastic surgery going on. They don't look like that. The natural woman is sagging, dragging. That's what a natural woman looks like, sagging, dragging. No disrespect to the women. But you see, sometimes they got this plastic surgery going on so good, them women look better than men. Turn the women look better than a woman. I was like, man, that don't look right. So don't be deceived. No. A man can be tempted to sin against his wife, even if he loves her. When she withholds herself from him. Uh, you know, I heard about a story where this lady with Teflon, she was bragging. I ain't let my man touch me in about a whole month. And guess what happened? He went to visit the other gas station. And I didn't help their marriage. He's feeding in between the lies. We got some kids here. So don't tempt your person. And what does the Bible say about that? 1 Corinthians 7, 1 through 5. It says, Now, concerning the things where I wrote unto you, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Verse 3 says, Let not the husband, let the husband render unto his wife due beloveds, and likewise also the wife unto her husband. And verse 4 says, The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband hath not power over his own body, but the wife. Verse 5 says, Defraud ye not the other, except it be consent for a time, that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not from your inconsistency. What does it tell us? We're not supposed to withhold ourselves from the benefits of being married. Because what can happen? You're setting the devil up to tempt your spouse. Yeah. You're setting them up to fall and failure. You don't want that to happen. Don't set that up that that happens to your spouse. And then when it happens, the other person gets them and they take them away from you. And you say, why they don't love me no more? Why they don't want to be with me? You don't set people up. You don't play with people's emotions. The next part of 2 Peter 1 to 6 says is patience. And the Greek means hoop omane. Going back to 2 Peter 1 and 6. We're talking about Christian growth. If we can master these few things and our walk with God. We can be pleasing, and it's God's sight. Patience, which means steadfastness, consistency. When the church doors are open, I must be saved. I must be a part of the body of Christ. The characteristics of a man or a woman who is not swerved from his purpose and his loyalty to walking with God. You can't be swerved. The Bible says what? Those that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. It's an endurance race. It's not him that starts off real fast and runs. Papa, we see it in our old church. We had people, they would shoot up like a rocket. And fizzle like a star. But it's those that endure to the end. The same shall be saved. Trials of suffering. When we have a trial in life, we want to, sometimes we want to give it up. I had, I had one sister here, man, she done thrown the towel so many times. I'm done with church. I give up. I'm not coming back. And I said, hey, don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. And as the songwriter said, I don't feel no waste time. I come too far when I started. Nobody told me the road would be easy. I don't believe he bought me this far to leave me. And you can just put that in your spirit. No matter what you go through, Sister Freeman, God has never bought you this far to leave you. And the Bible says that he that's performed a good work in you will perform it to the end. A true understanding of having faith in God is this. No matter what I go through in life, God is going to bring me through it. Amen. No matter what trial, no matter what circumstance, no matter what health thing comes up, no matter what trial and judgments are against me, 
that I have my faith and trust in God, God is going to get me out of it. Yes. God is going to sustain me. God's going to help me. Why? Because we are precious. Yes. The Bible says that we are the apple of his eye. And he said, if you do what I ask you to do, you love me, you be faithful to me. He said, I'll hold you as a treasure above all the earth. And I'll back you. I'll stand behind you. You serve me, I got your back. You know, it's nothing like having a good friend that got your back. That's right. Come on, come on. Frank got my back. I remember one time I had a dispute with a guy. He got really upset. Him and his dad got upset. I started a church. And I went to say hi to the guy. We was at the uh, community center. And he talked about, he made videos that I'm you know, this and that. And I went to say hi to him. Frank just said in his car, just watch. He said, we just want to make sure that everything go good. I don't, have to, I don't have to put the hands on the guy. It's good having somebody that has your back. But even though, like, Frank got my back, guess who was my friend that got my back? Jesus Christ. And what does the Bible say about Jesus? It said that he's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Man, why wouldn't you want a friend like that? He loves you. Mm -hmm. He loves man. There ain't nobody love me like Jesus love me. That's right. Nobody. Nobody. Like Tom Ryan said, nobody can do me like Jesus do me. Romans 8 and 30. What does it say? Moreover. Give y'all a chance to turn on a race horse, y'all. And this is a good Bible study. We're talking about Christian growth. If you could just take advantage of what we're talking about today. You can be faithful to prayer. You can be faithful to dedicate yourself to the house of God. It's going to blow you away in 2021 how God uses every single one of you. What does the Bible say? Eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. The sky's the limit. Do you know if we can just fall in love with God? You know what God would do for you, Bob and Poppy? Mom, do you know what God's going to do for your life? If you can just dedicate yourself to him, you can just walk with him, you can deny yourself, pick up that cross and follow Jesus all the days of your life. Do you know, even in the limited capacity that you have, that you can have a prayer life that can shake the foundations of hell? And bring many people to God. Because you know how to reach out to God. You know she's blind at this time. She can't do a lot of physical activity. But though you can pray. And you have a voice. Yeah. And you can reach unto God. And you can get heaven's attention. For what does the Bible say? It says if my people. Which are called by my name. Humble themselves. That means fast. And pray. And seek my face. Then will I hear from heaven and hear their land and forgive their sins. Come on now. Romans 8 and 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them also he has called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. This is a stage method. When God calls you, he goes out to all the earth. Many are called, few are chosen. He throws the, the net out. And if you receive it, you come into the kingdom. And that means that he justified. How does he justify you? That means that you obey the gospel. You repent of your sins. You obey the gospel. You get baptized in Jesus' name. And God fills you with the Holy Ghost. And then it said the last part, who he called, he also justified. What is the justification? When you make it into the rapture. When you go to be with Jesus Christ or you die full of the Holy Ghost. Outside popular belief, everybody that dies does not go to heaven. Everybody that dies does not, you're not guaranteed heaven unless you obey the word of the Lord and obey the gospel. Don't think you can live your own lifestyle, live everything contrary to this word of God. And then when you die, you automatically go to heaven. That is a lie. That is a lie. That is a lie. And welcome to a church that's not interested in pacifying you, but preaching you the truth yes. that you may respect God and his word. What does it mean, called, new? 
God wants to help you through every trial in your life. He wants to give you the strength you need. Verse 4 it says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he than is... Excuse me. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. I didn't actually give the scripture where that's at, but that's the Bible saying, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. It says in the Bible, until the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, but the violence is taken by force. What does that mean? That the, the kingdom of the devil has finally tried to take over the people of God. But how do we fight back? Through prayer, through fasting, through reading the word of God, and dedicating ourselves unto Jesus Christ. I'm almost about to close this Bible lesson. The last part of 2 Peter 1 and 6 says is godliness, which means humility. Godliness, which means reverence, respect, piety toward God's godliness. There are restrictions and personal boundaries that I have personally placed in my life that I will not cross because of my respect toward God, my wife, my kids, and my church. There's clothing I will not wear. There's places I will not go because the environment is not conducive to Christian living. Everybody knows right now a preacher shouldn't be in a strip club, correct? Or the bar, so y'all shouldn't either. God's no respect to our persons. If I got to do it, you do also. 2 Peter 1 and 7. And what does 2 Peter 1 and 7 say in wrapping it up? And godliness, brotherly kindness. Sister Freeman had to get on me about this brotherly kindness. And brotherly kindness, charity. What does that mean? We're supposed to take care of the people of God. Take care of people of the faith. Be there for them. Have their back. Don't talk about each other. Don't run each other down. We all have our shortcomings. We all have our failures. We all have our mistakes. And there ain't one of us that's better than any other. That's right. Come on now. We have people that come from backgrounds of addiction and drugs and prostitution and all them things. And I'm going to tell you, if it wasn't for the grace of God, I could be in the meth house right now. That's right. If it wasn't for the grace of God, Frank, I could be in the crack house right now. If it wasn't for the grace of God, I could be on a bed full of HIV about to die of AIDS. Come on. And just because I'm holy living for God, it doesn't make I'm even better than a prostitute. Because there's nothing for the grace of God. I am what I am. And it sounds about charity. You got to have a love for everybody. I love everybody. I don't care about their background. I don't care if they're homosexual, transgender, trisexual. I can talk to anybody. Because guess what? Who's able to save unto the utmost? Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, I don't have to judge them. The word judges them. All I got to do is love them and preach that there is deliverance. That there's a way. There's a better way. And God wants to save you unto the utmost. To them that believe. To them that give God a chance. Praise be to God. My God can save anybody. I remember I was in the church, James. And the preacher said, my ministry ain't powerful enough to save a homosexual. Right when he said that, I knew that he wasn't the man God for that city. Because the Bible says the gospel is able to save unto the utmost to him that believe it. Fall in love with people. Be nice to people. Be kind. Don't stick your nose up to anybody. Because it could be a shortfall right down. I was looking at YouTube, just scanning through it. Conor McGregor was talking about he's the king. He got to get a whole bunch of cabinets yesterday. Cap, cap, what do you call that? Cap, that, that bottom thing? Cam, he got to eat a whole bunch of canvas. He's going around the king. Dude, I knocked him the next week. My king ain't never got knocked out. Isaiah said his train that filled the temple. He ain't never lost a battle. He ain't never lost a victory. He ain't never got his tail whipped. That's what kind of God we serve. King of kings, lords of lords. Yes. Unto us, there's only one God. Yeah. And James 2, 19 said, if you believe us in one God, you does well. Why? Because the devil believes and he trembles. Yes. You know how scared that devil is of us? If you just get this grip, 
that God has your back. You just got to get his. Do you know that if you start living for God, one person can send a thousand devils to flight? That's right. Just one person. You just start having a prayer meeting. You su you're suffering. You're struggling with anything. Man, you know what the devil's scared of you going to do? He's scared you're going to get in a prayer meeting and you're going to grab that power from another world. Come on now, you preaching. Come on, devil. And that strength that comes from the most high God. Man, I feel the power of God like I haven't felt a long time. Oh, God. God loves us. He wants to see us saved. I was having a Bible study with a doctor yesterday, a doctor in theology, Frank. And he asked me a question. He said, can Pharaoh be saved? I said, yes. He said, how can you prove it? I said, the Bible says God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Godliness and brotherly kindness. What is that brotherly kindness? It's another word in the epistles. It means unfeigned love. For the brother. Loving your brother. You know, a lot of times when we have a situation or we have a little problem with each other, you can really tell what a person's about when money's involved. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to lose your relationship over somebody for a little bit of money, guess what? You didn't even have a relationship. You didn't even have a friendship. Because a lot of people think what well, pain is godliness. And it's a lie. Last part of the scriptures, uh, 2 Peter uh, 1, 8 through 10. It says, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you should neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you have all this temperance, patience, godliness, you're not going to be unfruitful. You're going to bring people, you're going to bring people to God. People are going to say, you know what, man, they got something I like. They got something I need. They got something that I'm missing in my life. And I want to be a part of that body of Christ. And if we're not bringing forth fruit, we're displeasing God. Fruits of love, peace, joy, temperance. These shall be abounding in us. If you lack it in these areas, you need to reach for it. You need to grab a hold of it. Because it's all about being saved. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see it far off. And have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. If you lack any of these things, God said, you forget what I've done for you. You forget how I saved you. You forgot how I delivered you. Verse 10. Wherefore, rather, brethren, we give diligence to make your calling and election sure. It said, hey, take this walk of God serious. For if you do these things, you should never fail. It said, hey, if you take God serious... You take coming to church serious. You take praying serious. You take studying that word serious. You take God serious. What does the Bible say? You will never fail. You will never lose out with God. You want a guarantee to heaven? You obey these fruits of the Spirit. You obey this knowledge. You add to it. If you don't know much about God, get in that book and learn about God. Everybody here is literate. If you don't know about God, dig into it. Get a hold of it. And if you're struggling with something that has a vice grip on your life, if you can fall in love with God and get a deep, deep consecration with God, it doesn't matter what clinch the devil has on you. He has to let it go in Jesus' name. There was a man in Guerrero that had a thousand demons, two thousand demons, and he saw Jesus afar off, and he started running toward Jesus. And he said, what's your name? He said, we are a legion, for we are many. And even 2,000 demons could not stop that man to come into Jesus Christ. Mm. So it doesn't matter if there's 10,000, 15,000 demons on your life, Frank. There's nothing to stop you when you want to make your way to the most powerful God in the world, Jesus Christ. And you said, it says to us, we should never fall. What a guarantee is that you never fall and lose out with God. Man, that's a blessing. I want to thank you. That's our Bible study on Christian growth. We're going to do a little offering. Anybody like to give unto the Lord? We want to. Everyone that gave last year, um, make sure we can get with my wife. We'll get you a tax statement for you use for your taxes and stuff like that. And we're thankful for everyone that has gave. And um, for those that would like to give electronically, we have a cash app. app. It's Money Sign Westside Tabernacle. Uh, Cash App, 
Also, we have a P.O. Box. It's a West Side Tabernacle, uh, Junction City, Kansas, P.O. Box 3118. If you'd like to say anything or something like that and support this ministry, be a part of saving people's lives. Be a part of investing in something that's going to happen. And, you know, I just want to share a testimony about this church. This actually, getting this building during the midst of a pandemic is actually a miracle. I didn't know this, Papa, but I was hearing a preacher talk about that a lot of Jesus' name churches have shut down. Yeah. And after they open after the pandemic, they don't even come back. There's people not even come back to churches. They have to close their doors. And during the midst of pandemic, God gave us a beautiful building, yeah. gave us church, gave us space. Because we had a purpose. We had a, we had a desire that I wanted to do something for God. And we want to thank everybody that's been supportive to this ministry. It's because of your giving, this is going to keep on going. And God's going to do what he's going to do because he's God. And I'll give you a short sermon and I'll go ahead and let you go today. Um, the sermon I'm going to talk about today is wise men still seek him. How many women and wise men we have in the audience? Lift your hands, please. If anyone's wise, loves God, amen. I'm talking to you. And if you didn't raise I'm talking to you anyway. And uh, let us stand for the reading of the word of the Lord, if you don't mind. We're going to go to Matthew 2, 1 through 8. And I promise, Lord willing, I won't keep you long. I got a short sermon. It's only about a page and a half for you people that are a little restless. Second, uh, excuse me, second of Matthew, chapter 2, 1 and 8. And I'll give you all a chance to turn there. And I want to thank you for everybody attending. Come be a part of something that's growing and getting bigger and bigger. As the day goes by. Oh, it's just the Lord and I. Second Peter. And it says, the coming of the wise men. Matthew 2 and 1. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. He may be seated. And I'm talking about today that wise men, and I can say wise women, still come to worship him. You may be seated. And verse 8, King Herod said to him, and this is what he said, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may worship him. King Herod told the wise men, hey, when you find out where this king is, let me know because I want to come worship him too. But King Herod was deceptive. He was a liar. When you read about King Herod, he was a very evil man. He had such a, a anger that he was scared for any man to take his kingdom. Do you know that he also killed three of his sons because he was worried about them taking the kingdom? This man was so possessed with his wife that he had her killed and had her preserved in honey. That he could go out by every day and visit her in a pot. This man was a wicked man. And he said, you know, he was worried about Jesus coming because there was going to be a real king that was going to do justice and do righteously before man and God. So he said, hey, let me know where he is so I can worship him. Now, King Herod wasn't no more interested in worshiping God than the devil. But he wanted to trick the wise man that he can get what he wanted. Why you say that, preacher? Because when Herod found out that the wise man did not come back and let him know where Jesus was, guess what he did? He went and had his soldiers go to the coast and kill every single kid that was two years old and under. And that's fulfilled the uh, prophecy of Rachel saying, they're Rachel weeping for her children and they cannot be comforted because they were not. He was so jealous of another king taking over that he wanted to wipe out all the kids. And he wanted to wipe out Jesus. But Jesus went to Egypt and says, after the death of King Hera, the Lord said, take him out of Egypt. And fulfill the scripture, out of Egypt have I called my son. But do still, do wise men still seek him? Is there any wise among us? We find out that the wise men brought gifts. They brought gold. Which represented an eastern culture of royalty and mortality and deity. What can we take from the wise men? There's only one true king that should be worshipped. We're scrolling through here. Our king, as I said before, he's never lost a battle. The wise men bought frankincense, frankincense. And it's originating from Arabia and North Africa. It's arisen from a tree of a Boswelli family. Used in incense and perfume. It represents worship. 
Wise men still worship the true king of kings and the lords of lords. The wise men bought myrrh. What is myrrh? Myrrh is also a dried resin from Arabia and North Africa from a thorny shrub bush. And it's from the Kampora tree. And it's used for pain killing and embalming. Bomb. And we also know from the wise men that they represent a divinity and that there's only one true God. Frankincense, it represents worship. Worshiping of the most high God. We all must worship God in spirit and truth. The Bible says they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now we talk about a bombing. What is a bombing used for? We talked about earlier for dead bodies. We know that the, the Savior was going to die one day and that his body was going to be embalmed. Now how do we get what we need from God in this last hour? How do the preacher tell us what we need to do? In closing, as I talked about earlier, you must be born again. I don't finish one of my sermons. I always talk about being born again of the water and spirit. But preacher, I have accepted the Lord as my personal savior. You know how far that's going to get you? Frank, that's like me going to the bank and going to the teller and said, I accept that million dollars you have for me. And what's that teller going to look at me like, man, you are crazy. No, I accept that million dollars you gave me. They're going to look at me like, what in the world are you <laughs> what are you talking about? They're like, man, they're going to call the cops. They're gonna, this guy's trying to rob us. They're going to look at you crazy. But you have to put some action in your faith in God. Obey the gospel by repenting of your sins and being baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins. Let God accept you. How will you know God accept you? How will you know God accepted your sacrifice? We see in the book of Ezekiel, we see in the time when Ezekiel went against the false prophets, they had the sacrifice and fire came down and consumed the sacrifice. So when God accepts your sacrifice, the fire of the Holy Ghost will come upon you and you receive what the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. As we said before, obey the gospel, obey the sacrifice. God will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. And this signs, this says what Jesus says in Mark 16 and 17, what happened to you. And he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow those that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils and they shall speak in new tongues. And in closing, will you be like the wise men in the Bible that took that time to seek him, to put him first, to find a place to pray? Wise men still seek the Lord and pray and get a hold of God. 55, Isaiah 55 and 6 are our last scripture. What does Isaiah 55 and 6 tells us? And this lets us know we have a time. We have a window and a space to get right with God. Isaiah 55 and 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. And it says, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he would abundantly pardon our sins. Amen, amen. Wise men still seek him. We're going to open up that if you're struggling with anything, you need help, you need God's favor, you need God's divine intervention in your life. We're going to open up this and call altars where you can just take a little time and pray and seek God's face. And ask God for help. God, I need your help. Don't wait till it's too late. You don't have the strength. Don't wait till you're on your deathbed and you're needing the strength. And you don't even have the ability. You don't even have the strength to call on God like you need to. And it says, let the wicked forsake their ways. And let us all draw nigh unto him. We want to thank you for joining us at Westside Tabernacle. We hope that this service has been a blessing to you. We hope that we encourage you. We strengthen you. We hope you get a hold of God. Help you to walk with God. Help you to get strong. The word of God is a sharp two-edged sword. It cuts you and it cuts me at the same time. Why? Till we all come to the unity of the faith. That we may walk and please God. Amen. We're going to open up for prayer. If anybody would like to pray, we'll pray with them. 
in Jesus' name. Get some music started.